the foremost challenge of and for Liberians is, are Liberians capable of uniting and integrating ourselves? Good morning and welcome to Attorney Commander J.R. Kopopa Chesson talk show on this beautiful Tuesday morning, September, that is the 26th, right? The 26th, 2023. What has this day got in store for us? We must question ourselves. We must re-examine ourselves, our political system today and where we stand. Is this multi-party system beneficial for us? Is it uniting us? Is it bringing us together as it should? Let me bring on my correspondent from Liberia, Mr. Sam Worker. Sam, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, good morning, Rod. Yeah, my brother, how's everything? Yeah, uh, so it's you okay. Out there, brother, you're looking good. Thank you, so, thank you. <laughs> yes, my man. I managed, I, managed, I managed to get a phone, you know, stationary. That's so you won't, you won't, you won't explain that shit no more. Yeah, yeah, you brother. Now you yeah. look sharp. So yeah. what's going on in our country, man? Well, in spite of ne uh, our challenges uh, that the government has not given them the balance of the remaining money, for the conduct of the runoff, ballot papers arrived yesterday on Monday in the country, and so we 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 are. I mean, I mean, that's a sign of uh, election being right around the corner. So that's a good sign. <clears throat> that's a good sign. And tell us, give us a rundown. Of what's going on? What other news you have? And uh, of, of yesterday, Monday in court, where well, like Sunday night. Uh, uh, five uh, family members of the late Inja Tupa, mm -hmm. who was raped and murdered uh, 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 in in 2016, 17, 15, 16, by hands with and mighty Piku, the entire family you know left in the fire. When the house got on fire at night, there was no way to escape. Only two survivors in the old manners. Up and down, police team investigating the cause of the fire. Wow. Yeah, and the uh, U.S. 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 has warned its citizens of, uh, you know, emergency preparedness. So what what are they sense? You know, when you, when you see this kind of warning coming, I mean, there's just there's trouble somewhere. So we, we gotta pray and see, and, and that uh, not nothing bad happens in this country. Patrick yeah. Okai, a librarian journalist, complained he alarmed that uh, Titi Gibro, the wife of George Gibro, a football uh, uh, a teammate of uh, George Weir, and a good friend of George Weir, his wife is the deputy director at the at the library broadcasting system called the EABC. Mm -hmm. She is threatening Okai uh, of uh, supporting GMB. So. So the staff, I mean, it's like, it, I mean, since CDC is in power, every, 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 every uh, uh, employer or um, um, employee of that uh, agency must vote for CDC. That's what she's, she's saying. Mm -hmm. So since uh, Oka is, is supporting JMB, I mean, she got serious problem. And, and that way she, she issued a threat against him and he complained. He had alarm to the international community, to the brain security, you know, apparatus. So I see, but before we even go on, I want to ask all my viewers to please share the show. Let everybody have an opportunity to view this. Uh, I'll be very appreciative to all of you. But Sam, how do you view this electoral process? We still haven't gone to election yet. We're still in the process. I saw Dara Dillon, and a group, they went to the NEC to protest, wanted to know when the final <clears throat> water rule will be published, all of that. What's going on with that? Oh, yeah. Uh, the election laws uh, 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 say that uh, 30 days 
to the election, to the country of election, this uh, 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 voter roll should be updated and published in all political parties, <clears throat> you know, that, that are qualified to have copies <clears throat> of all this information. But up and down, you get less than uh, of, of, of two weeks, about two weeks to the election, it hasn't been published. So, I mean, it caught the concern of the uh, uh, party especially. But we have not heard of any, uh, any other party, you know, you know uh, raising any, any alarm or so. It's not a unity party. That's why uh, uh, Dillon went there to uh, send us so what really is going on. What are the challenges? But so, uh, they, they, I mean, there was no right answer given to, to, to Dillon uh, 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 the next, in the next year, David Brown told Dillon, according to him, that uh, anytime next Friday, anytime this week or so, or next week Friday. Well, according to, to what I saw briefly, she was saying that they are working <clears throat> on it. They got so many people working on it. Uh, 24 hours a day, and they will soon get the voter roll out into all the uh, voting station, voting places. They will put but is, is that is that an excuse, Ron? Excuse me, is that an excuse? The law says 30 days to the count of election. You I go said, almost, almost, yeah, a week or plus to the election, and you, you, you want to give an excuse? That goes to show how incompetent the system is. The people are. You know, the system can only work according to the people who they hire to do the program. If the people are incompetent, if they slow, if they cannot make good decisions, all of that impact the electoral process. Look at how long it took to get the biometric equipment. Then it can't work. Then it got to decide, oh, we set it aside, we'll go with the voter roll, the old process. Isn't that all waste of time? Now we're not sure if everybody voted. And now we're waiting for the voter roll to come out. So everybody yeah. can verify that those on the voter roll are actual people who are qualified to vote, who have the right to vote. So, I mean, if the voter roll is coming out late. Would these people have enough time to check all the names on the voter roll to verify that all the people voting are actually certified to vote? You think so, Sam? Mm. <laughs> I mean, election process in Liberia. You think we're going to end up in violence again? I hope not, but what I what I'm saying, what I'm sensing, I mean, if we're not very mindful, it will be deadly. It will need violence. Because you see, Rodney, uh, Labrador made a mistake. They incorporated all the warlords in all the political parties. All. Not one is exempted. And so when you can alarm coming, when you can threaten remark coming, I mean, it's not strange. So I, I'm afraid. You see, America is giving warning. To his citizens, and America is our power here. When they when they when they, when they sense danger, they will be the first to alarm. But so with all this, you telling me, Sam, you trying to say that what America is doing is in vain because they are part of the situation, the problem in Liberia. You know, they are. Our government overthrew. We went back years back. And now we're having the same problems. Because nobody cared about our country. Nobody cared about the future of Liberia. You know, they just opened the process to everybody. Look at the people that are going to Ghana to debate about the change in Liberia. I mean, how can countries in the world sit with war laws and war criminals to discuss peace right after war? That's asinine. That's crazy. And you see, this is what got me so disgruntled with Emma Sawyer and all these useless people who are supposed to be educated and they're nothing but rogues and criminals just like the warlords. 
all these people are fighting for their own interests instead of the interests of Liberia and Liberian people. You know, they could have gotten rid of those warlords. They could have made all those warlords shame and put them in abeyance. They could have done that. They could have encouraged America to give them the civilians total control of our electoral process. So you want to tell me America were afraid of the warlords too? Were America afraid of the warlords for? So that means they had no interest in our country. Because any sensible person knows when you come from war, you can't take the very combatants that destroy the country, the most ignorant people, the most dumb people, and have them sit down to debate the future of the new democracy. How you do that? All these guys are dummies. They didn't even did all of them. Prince Johnson didn't go to high school. Yeah, he, he took, he said he grabbed well. You see one of Wells. Let him bring his and, 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 and Paul Wells feel him. So he killed Paul Wells. You see? You see? And these the very people America sit down with and negotiate the future of um, Liberia. These people did not mean to save us. They didn't mean to save us because the more our country is depleted, the more the intelligence of our people is lost. They can come in and tell us anything and take all our resources legally. Because right, look at Liberia right now. We got so dummies in our country. We got so rogues and criminals. So they will sign any document for money. They don't even understand the value of our nation, of our history, of our culture, nothing. You take all these dummies and you put them in charge of our country. What do you think will happen? America will rob us. But you see, the only problem is now, we got Russia. Now America got to choose between their control of Liberia or sharing Liberia with Russia. Because you see, these are the kind of things that make us re reluctant to even get rid of the Russians. Why would we get rid of the Russians? Huh? They're just as bad as the Americans. Our lives aren't going to get any better. So let them fight among themselves for control of Liberia. They will never think we will suffer. We will suffer. And this is why we got to take care of our country. We got to take care of ourselves, man. You know, I'm, I'm not against America. I can't be against America. America is the greatest nation in the world. Of all the nations, America will give us the best peace in the world. But she got to stop her bullshit lies and deception. Because we're going to play that. We are Americans. We're not dumb. But it's just that our leaders are so corrupt and greedy. And over the years, Tuckman benefited by using American interests to maintain his power. But Tuckman was not an idiot. Tuckman was not an idiot. And even Tuckman, they killed Tuckman because they, these guys really wanted to change our lives. They really wanted to change our life. What do you think they killed Toba for? Liberian people really think Sammy do kill Toba? My man, let me tell you something. It's not about power or strength or who's strong or Congo country and all of that. It's not about that. Our soldiers were loyal people to our country. Even Jebel, who they used to plan the coup and set up all the, this thing to kill our the or through the government, all of that. Jeffrey <clears throat> didn't want to do it. If Jeffrey wanted to do it, Jeffrey would not have two people like me and, and Richard Torber to go tell our power to bring money, let him crush everything. That was Jeffrey to, to Richard Torber. Hmm? I just wanted money to survive. And they didn't hide it. They told us 
that America were calling them to Sierra Leone to have secret meetings to overthrow Toba. I told my pa. How many times I didn't tell my pa? Those people did not believe anything other than America will come to save us. That was the shit these people believed in our country. And for years we're believing that bullshit. How would people leave their home 5,000 miles away to come to Africa to save us? We got to be able to be seeing our own safety at least for 24 hours. We got to protect our system. Until people who are our allies come to help us. But you sit there, you have nobody to protect the system. Then you say you're waiting for foreigners to come to come protect us. When my pa told me that thing, I was like, man, get the hell out of my face. I want to tell my father that thing. You know, because I knew the man told me America calling them to, to Sierra Leone to overthrow this government. Then how you tell me they see me America coming to protect you? I was stupid. Our leaders just assholes. <clears throat> I couldn't understand my part telling me that stupid thing. And then I told him that again, I said they will all throw you all. all this stuff you're talking about, America coming, Bonnie Dempster here. You dealing with people, with military people who are all through the government. You talking about police and America coming. Are you crazy? Even if Vani Dempster was, was, was capable of, of securing the country, the weapons they had, pistols and shit, that like, what you do with, with, with submachine guns and, and machine guns? You know, I, I didn't understand what my power was talking. And the more I kept telling him that, I kept emphasizing that. When you tell somebody something four times, if they get it, then they deserve the what they get. I ain't not coming to cry over my pa. I told my pa over and over, I said, they're going to overthrow you. They're going to overthrow you. And he kept, I told my pa was going to arrest me one time. I think he did because he put me in jail. I think that was part of it too. He was tired of me telling him. Hmm. So, say, how, how can you feel sorry for these kind of people? When you tell the man four times, you the leader of our country, they will overthrow you. My pa never even investigated the shit I told him. He never investigated it. Your son telling you four times they will overthrow you. So sad. Yeah. And you getting mad at me for telling you the shit. And I'm among the soldiers. Every day, I'm out there in the field with the soldier. I'm telling you they will overthrow you. Then you getting mad at me. Look at the shit where we are now. In my part, I investigated that shit. Call Jebo in and investigate Jebo. Our country will never be destroyed today. I didn't even tell you it was Jebo. But once you get that kind of information, the security force is supposed to be investigating every soldier, every commander, even me. Who gave you the information? The police are supposed to call me and investigate me. They didn't do that shit. My pa just kept saying, oh, oh, finally got it, finally got it, and America here. Yeah. The people could destroy our country on bullshit. Bullshit, Sam. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> and these are some of the things that hurt me, man. Your own son telling you they will overthrow you. Mm -hmm. You can't investigate the shit. Man, my father didn't even take the time to investigate what I was telling me. He kept dismissing me, dismissing me, dismissing me. And here we are today, a fucked up country. Now we that, was a first, that was a first hand information. But Sam... It just showed that my father and were ready to die. Our country had to change. Because there was no way you would get this, you'd be in power to, to in charge of security. And the person close to you in the field telling you this will happen and you keep dismissing it. 
dismissing it, dismissing it four times. Then the last time he called all the security chiefs in his office and they tried to make me look like a fool. And they killed most of them that were in that room. Mm. They killed most of them. That were Vani, that were Fred Blade, that were uh, Wilfred Clark. There was somebody else. There were four guys in that room. I can't remember who the four person. I didn't know the four person, but I knew the three guys who were in the room. I interacted with them. So they Fred Blade, where, where was our government? And Fred Blade, that was the commander of First Battalion, when Toba Fr called Fred Blade. Fred Blade. Yeah, he was a commander for he was a football man who was a brother. Okay, because he began, he began he began minister he began he began minister of sport. Yes. Okay, I see. That Fred okay, Blay, I see. Fred Blay was the one who betrayed Torbo. Uh, Torbo was calling Fred Blay when his people were shooting. Yes. Fred Blay refused to move first battalion because he Fred Torbo called my pa when he heard the shooting. He called my pa. Okay. Just until he called first battalion, let them come down. Talk about call first battalion. First battalion refused to move. They didn't move. And I was Fred Blake command. He betrayed Tobo. He betrayed uh, 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 really. They killed really. Really, they fought. Mm -hmm. Charles really didn't fought those guys, man. They killed for Connor, Connor really. Yeah, Connor, Connor really. They, yeah, they fought those guys. And look, I killed them. You know, they have the hmm. prayer break him up, the, the doctor read him, being minister, and in the end, they tie a, 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 a cement around his foot and threw him in the ocean. He got what he deserved. Hmm. You see, that was my power telling me all the time. I was like, then no guy tried to make me look like a little boy. Oh, you should be home sleeping. And I said, I look at that and say, hmm. y'all don't know what's coming for y'all, man. You see? Hmm. Yeah. Look, I said on there and let that go guys overthrow our country, man, our government. On bullshit. On bullshit. Oh. Was it you want to talk to you uh 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 right after the coup the day or the day after? Before he got arrested. I was in hiding, sir. Okay. He was trying to kill me <laughs> to uh, talk to him. Yeah, no. Him yeah, no. You know, but God works in a mysterious way. Mm -hmm. You see, Sam, I'm a professional. I've always strived to be a professional. <clears throat> so whether my power in power or not, I did my job according to how I was supposed to do it. Now, I wanted to do it. Okay? So when you do your job, the way you're supposed to do it, you are guided by your rules and regulation, by the law. You, I don't go around hating people. I don't go around and, and disparaging people, taking things from people for myself and, and, and taking people private property for myself like other people did. I don't do those kind of things. That's stealing. You know, they're not what we have government jobs for, to go around. You know, and people in this country do it. People in this country use their relatives in government to hurt other people. I was sitting here, I went in the supermarket one time, mm -hmm. sending money to, to, to Africa. And the girl behind the counter messed the thing up. And I stood there and I said to her, I said, you know, people depending on this money. That girl got an attitude. She called her relatives at the fraud unit in America, the federal fraud unit, and told them I was sending fraud money to Africa. And now her relatives, the people that were, the, were her relatives, they were calling me, cussing me, using the federal government, the resources of the federal government to investigate me on that bullshit that girl did. I cussed their asses. I <laughs> Us, their fucking asses. I told them, come after me if I don't sue the shit out of your asses. You see, they do the same shit here. That's human nature. In no matter where in the world you are, they got corrupt people, they got evil people, they got people who use the resources of government 
to hide people for the family member. And that's why I told you. She called me. I said, you know, you're using the resources of the federal government to hurt me because of your bitch relative in Rhode Island, that damn prostitute. She hung up the phone. I said, bitch, call me again. You know, what kind of shit is that? It's all over the fucking world. My people don't be, yes, we live good in this country. But the hype, the bullshit is here too. The people use the government instrumentalities to hurt other people too. They do it here too. They do it here too. And when they think you're foreigner, you don't know your rights, it's even worse. It's even worse. And these are the things we protect ourselves against. When our country and our people are united and secure, our country is protected. And this is why I'm against anything that further divide the Liberian people which is this multi-party system. Let me tell you something, my people. We are not so divided. We are not so paralyzed that we cannot unite ourselves, that we cannot come together. And though we are diverse, live in peace and harmony as one people. The way Tottenham then did the one-party system was wrong. They did it to keep themselves in power perpetually. You can't do that with our democracy. You can't do that. It has to be a fair and free system for all the Liberian people governed by our laws. And this is where Liberian people got to learn to follow our laws. We got to change our attitudes. We got to change our behaviors. We got to change our mental thinking when it comes to our laws and its implementation in our country. We got to change it. We got to stick to our laws. The same thing Sam was talking, my, my correspondent was talking about the National Election Commission not meeting its 30 day mandate by the law to have the voter roll out. They got 30 days. You know, we know that even in America, things are behind because of manpower issues and problems like those. But still, you got to try. You got to push to get it done. Secondly, the NEC does not have the money it's supposed to have. The government not facilitating the process by giving NEC the money it needs. So that's another issue with the NEC. Okay, how will the process go on where they don't have all the money they need? And the money, the government giving them the money piece by piece, piece by piece, instead of in the lump sum they need to facilitate the whole process. You know, we gotta look at the overall issue as to why the NEC is not functioning. Now, if they had everything they needed and still were not functioning, then we can complain. But when when the snow when they slow and they're not getting the money they need to facilitate, you gotta pay people. You gotta pay people to do the voter roll and all the kind of the people gotta get paid on time. People gotta realize that their work is not in vain. They're getting paid. So if they don't have the money to run the process good, it can't go on good. It would be del there would be delays. All we hope for is that the process is fair, that they do their best to keep the process fair, that if there are any errors, they are so minimal that they wouldn't matter. Okay? Now that's the kind of fairness we need in the electoral process because Everything cannot go on according to plan. There will be glitches. We are a third world nation. We have issues with everything in our country. Electricity, water, facilities. All these things, we got problem with everything. So the, we got to understand that the NEC is just an extension of who we are and what our country is. So if the NEC cannot meet its deadlines, 
it's because the government is not giving them what they want. Right, Sam? Oh, Sam, go on again. The government not giving them what they want. Okay? So I just want the NEC to be fair and free. But let's go back to my topic. My concern is for the well-being of my country, the unification and integration of my people in a good and prosperous way that will benefit us. The way our one-party system was done in the past was done wrong. It was done wrong. We can restructure it. Our one-party system can function just like a multi-party system. It's just that everybody will not, even if people groups they have different names, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But our one-party system can work and we'll be united. We'll stay on a one party. We'll come together and vote on the name of the party that we want. The nation will vote we have a referendum on a name we want to choose for the people party. And we go back to our one party system. Everything will be set up fair. That's all we want, free and fair election. Where everybody can come from anywhere in the country and run. The same way I would do multi-party election, the candidates got to meet certain financial obligations to be able to run for, for the for position in the party. We can't have 50 candidates, 100 candidates, no. We got to structure in a way that people will form the lay groups that want to vie for presidency and vice presidency. And they can, they can name their group anything. And the party can monitor the election. We can set up an election commission at all where people will go and register to vote and do everything just like a multi-party system. But the only thing is, despite all our differences, we'll be one party. We'll be one people. But we function free and fairly. Everybody will have the chance to vie for the presidency of the country. Everybody will have the chance to buy for the standard bearership of the party. Everybody will have the chance, everything. But the only thing that will cause it to go right is our respect for our laws, our respect for our system of governments, governance. My Liberian people, we learn it from America. Our democracy is not American democracy. There is no way Liberian democracy can be American democracy. No matter how much we copy from America, we cannot be an American democracy. We may be similar to America's democracy, but our democracy is Liberian people's democracy. Our language, our American people call it accent, our culture, our societal norms, our public policy beliefs, all of those, those things form our democratic process and system. America is not like that. Americans don't talk like us. They don't have the culture like us. Yes, we may copy American things, but we do it in a Liberian way. And that was so fucked up. <laughs> so, so my people, we got to restructure our lives. Nothing wrong with doing it the Liberian way. But we can do it the right way. We can do it a good way. We can do it to ensure that our system is free and fair under our law. And that's why we gotta change everything that we are. We gotta change it. Our behaviors, our actions, our ideals toward our country and our laws and our system of governance, all of that gotta change, my people, if our country gotta change. All my life, I pray that God will send me to America to become a professional. Okay? To do things for a positive and good result. 
according to how I plan it. How we lay out, we pursue that path to see whether we succeed or fail. That's all our planning process is about. And if we're not honest, men and women, we will never see the fruition of our efforts. We will never see it because it will break down. Because we steal, steal, steal. If all of us had a desire to be professionals, our country would change overnight. Because our desire would not to be personally enriched. Our desire would be to see our work come to fruition. Wherever we put our hands to do, succeed and do what we wanted to do. So if we all think like professionals and strive to be, be professionals, we now want to steal petty king change from our country. That it, that's not our interest. Our interest is to raise money for Liberia. It's to raise plenty of money for us to develop our country overnight. So when people turn around, they'll say, whoa, is that in Liberia? Like when I went to North Carolina recently, I hadn't been to Attleboro for so long. You know, Attleboro is a farming town. That's where you have the A&T University, the agriculture university. So when I went to, to, to North Carolina, where I first came to America, and years after, Greensboro was like a farmland with shit smelling all over the place. Cows were shitting all over the town. You go to, you go to, ask anybody who go to Greensboro and uh, North Carolina, where A&T University was, you had the cows running all through the city. You know, the shit sent all over the cows shitting everywhere. But I went back to Greensboro like five years ago. I couldn't believe that place. That place has transformed so bad, man. I was looking at the place, I said, whoa! I said, this place changed. It totally changed. And that's how we can transform Liberia. That's how we can transform Liberia overnight. But we, the people, got to understand our commitment to Liberia and to each other. That is great. We have a great commitment to each other that we must meet the challenge to forge a great nation and a great people. We have a great commitment. And that commitment is what we serve as a cohesive element to bring us together. When all of us realize that we are committed to each other to change our nation, to hell with Congo business, to hell with country business. That shit is not in our book. We are Liberian people. We must stand on the foundation of our beliefs that we are one people, we are one nation, and nothing can change it. We're on the road to that, on the top of Top of what uniting us because we have mission. We are not just sitting down idle, watching our country destroy, sitting our zogos. No, our country has mission. And this is what will happen again. Because when we come back to Liberia, our military will have a mission. Our police will have mission. Everybody in our country will have mission. We have work to do. That's why I say we got to resurrect and revive our 1980 revolution. Because that's what we gave us the impetus to rise up like men and women seeking professionalism to build our country, our nation. We'll rise up as professional. Our army will change. Our army will be professional. You will not have people sitting there wasting our money. No. Our army will have a work to do. They will train. They will train. They will be an effective military force to keep peace through our West Africa. We will train. America will support us. They will support us. That bullshit that used to happen on the Torbo and Tottenham where we used to drag ourselves to enslavement, it ain't gonna happen no more. We're gonna be active participants to our West Africa and Africa. 
our military will be a strong force in Africa. Will be a peacekeeping force, will be a liberating force, will be a united force to free our people. Our country will rise up from the dust. We build our roads fast. From Monrovia to everywhere in our country, our roads, the people will go to work. Liberian people, you don't want work, you will get work. You will work and never be full. Every morning you'll get it, you will have a job. You will have a paycheck, not from the government, but from the companies you're working for. Because we open up our country. We change the dimension of our nation, the minds of our people. We are one people. We can't be united and fighting each other, the asses. We are one people. Our destiny is together. We cannot separate our destiny. We are one people. Remember that. We are one people. We came too far for us to divide, for us to hit each other, for us to seek to destroy each other. No, 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 it will not happen. It cannot happen. We are a Christian nation. Under Jesus Christ, it will never happen. It will never happen. Take it to the back. Our nation has a higher purpose. And we are, as Liberian people, we must understand and realize that purpose. Because when we understand that purpose, we unite more than ever before because we are not our own enemies. We are our brothers and sisters. And we can unite and bring our country together more than ever before. Anything we want to do, we can do it as a one people and one nation. We can do it. Our leadership got to be fair and honest. Our leadership got to understand that we serve our people. And we cannot rob our people. When we rob our people, we are nothing but low lives and treacherous fools. What we need in our country, we need patriots. We need people who understand that our nation is precious to us, just like our mothers and fathers. And if we lose our nation, we lose our freedom, our will to do what we want to do as a people, conscious of our oneness and our power and strength as a unified nation and people. It cannot happen until we, the people, understand and realize that that is a challenge that is a great challenge that has evaded us for so long because of our greed because of our ignorance because of our backwardness and our failed leadership <clears throat> why we want to lead our country forever why we want to be so selfish, man? That, that, that's extreme selfishness. You come, you do your six years, God bless you, you do your 12 years, you leave. You stay there and build the system. You don't destroy our country. You don't come to rob our country and put your children in power and things like that. No, we got to punish those people. We got to punish Prince Johnson. We got to punish all the warlords who are in power right now. They cannot get away with it. They cannot. Get away with it. That's the way our country will change. All these people that have murdered our people in mass and have come on top of that and stolen our wealth, they got to be prosecuted. All of them got to face the war crimes court and give us our money back. These people can't take our wealth and just steal it. No. They, gotta, they didn't give us our wealth back. They go into jail for an extended period of time. They will never see freedom again. Not only will we punish you, but to avoid punishment, you got to give us our money back. You give us our money back, we have mitigating circumstances to give you less punishment. But you give us our money back, we'll flock you and punish you till you die. Because that is the law. When you steal from the people, you got to give them back what you stole and make them as whole as they were before you robbed them. So to make us whole, 
you will stay in jail and work for, for us till you die. <clears throat> we'll bury you in a damn field with rogues and murderers. I don't give a damn who you are. You don't believe me? Let's try it. This is a new era. My Liberian people, we need this kind of leadership to set our country on the right course. We need this kind of don't give a damn leadership to change the mentality of our people. We need this kind of honest and fair leadership to guide our country into the future. The stealing, the corruption, the lies, the deceitfulness, the things and disease. When we ask you questions in government, you better tell us the damn truth or you will be stripped of everything you own and have and be put in jail. The deceitfulness, the lies, the treachery got to stop. We are not a Western nation. We are a poor African communal living people nation. You mess with our laws, you try to deceive and corrupt us, we punish you. And this is where we must start, my people. This is where we must start. We must send a loud and clear message to the rogues and criminals that this is a new Liberia and we're not tolerating. We not make laws to satisfy them. We make laws to set our society on the right path. To have real men and women who will say what they mean and mean what they say. When I finish with my Liberia, nobody will lie to you. Any Liberian tell you something, you will go to the bank and cash it. Because Liberia will change. No Liberian will lie to you. When you ask Liberian people something, they will tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Or they will not talk at all. But if they talk and they lie or they tell you deceitfulness and we find out about it, God help me. Jesus Christ has given me the power to fuck the shit out of you and put you in jail and make you a damn slave to the Republic of Liberia. Try me. These are the kind of leaders we want. We want leaders who will not hesitate to punish our people, but justly and fairly and under the law. Because our country can change. We can't care about brother or sister or cousin or ma or pa. No. That's the thing that corrupt our country. I remember when I was in government, or I told you this over and over. All my friends then were stealing money and buying cars for their mom, building houses. My mom wanted me to do the same. I told her, I said, no, my salary does not permit me to do that. It does not. I'm making 400 bucks a month. I'm not going to steal government money. I'm not going to live like those guys. Good luck is different from sheep luck. Mm -hmm. My luck, I know my luck. My luck is to struggle hard to do what I want to do, and I will succeed. But to go steal people money, to go lie on other people, to take my government things, that's not my forte. I'm a patriot. I stand for truth. I stand for justice. I stand for law and order. We need to bring this back into our society more than ever. When Liberian people talk, you better believe them because the new day is coming. You know, on the top of on October, you tell Liberian like, like people tell you something, you can't believe it. Your own mind, but I tell you something, you don't know whether to believe it or not. That kind of change, man. It got to change because I'm not the kind of person I am. You tell me something, you better know you lie to me. I will fuck, I will kick you in the balls and kick you in the fish. That's why I like to talk it. So you can know how serious I am. You lie to me. Our country will change, man. If our country don't change, we can't grow. It will change. The deceitfulness, the lies, the treachery, the betrayal, the evil will stop. So I make your closing remark like that out of here. Yeah, you you mentioned about Liberia, uh, uh, American involvement in Liberian politics, and that's that's right. I believe that that is why Liberia um, is underdeveloped today. Because America's policy has not been clear to Liberia. Because if you have a good policy to your partner, your traditional partner, I mean, when you when you observe Asian society, you have to take steps. 
like in the case of France, France and, and Cote d'Ivoire, Rodney, I was I, I, in, in Abidjan, the resident minister for, for stealing money, government money, and he brought him back, he ran France and he brought him back. I will go to, you know, to face prosecution. But I mean, we don't do, I mean, America is not doing it for us. You see, a, a criminal uh, escaped to America, they sit there, and, and, and America, you know, nothing. Nothing comes out of it. So, so it's about time. It's about time that Liberia rise up to tell America straight in the face that like, indeed it might get involved positively instead of, you know, you know, or, 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 or just, you know, or, you know, these kind of bad things in this country. You know? Okay, thank you, Sam. You know, my people, we as Liberian people have the power to do what we want to do in our nation. Yes, we love America. We love Americans. Yes, there are very good people in America, decent people in this country. But just like anywhere in the world, there are greedy people too. There are mean people too. There are evil people too. So we're going to take the good with the bad. And to do that, we have to understand where we stand as a people, where our society stands as a nation and the people, how our governing structure is going to be in our country to benefit everybody in our society, how our governing structure will be to be fair with the resources of our country so that every county grows and benefits from the wealth of our country. How can we do that? Those are the challenges we have to face. All this politics and things, we're fighting to put people in power. Are they capable of meeting the challenges for and of the new Liberia? Are they capable? This is where we stand, my people. And I will leave you today with this challenge or the thought of the challenge. Are Liberian people capable of uniting and integrating ourselves? The time of the Liberian people is now. Aluta continua. The struggle of 1980 continues. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Maria. Thank you.